Get your groove on with Google Jamboard. And I'm so pleased to be joined today by Melanie Farrell, who is a digital learning coordinator for Wake County Public Schools. Uh, Melanie has been working for with educators for over 20 years on ways to infuse digital learning into their learning spaces. She's passionate about helping teachers assist students to find their voice and show what they know. She's a Google trainer and she loves providing professional development in G Suite for education. And Barbara is a teacher, trainer, facilitator, and a coach. She does it all. She's a certified Google trainer, and Barbara brings a passion for learning to all students from elementary to adult. She's presented sessions at multiple conferences at the national, state, and local levels for over 20 years. She's a digital learning coordinator in Wake County Public Schools in Raleigh, North Carolina, and she teaches online for the New England Institute for Teacher Education. And I'm very proud to turn it over to these two amazing facilitators. Ladies. All right, thank you for such a great introduction. We are so excited to be here today with you to share information about Google Jamboard, and it's gonna be a fast and furious 20 minutes. So hang tight, and that PDF was dropped to you in the chat, so feel free to open that up and follow along. Or if you're listening um, um, at an asynchronous time, that's fine as well. Hopefully you can dig into some of these resources when you have time. So here we go. We have some learning opportunities for you today um, using the Google Jamboard tool in this presentation. Uh, we will identify ways digital whiteboards can be used in the classroom. We will explore how to build digital activities for individual or group work, and we will examine how students can demonstrate their learning. So we're going to go back in the past just a little bit. On May 4th, there was a learning opportunity in a Lunch and Learn called Google Jamboard, your new favorite tool for student interaction. During that lunch and learn time, uh, the presenters uh, covered many of the basics with Google Jamboard, uh, Google Jamboard in your browser, in your app, and the physical Jamboard, as well as exploring some opportunities to use, to use Google Jamboard in the classroom. So today, we are going to get our groove on with Google Jamboard, and we're going to sort of step it up. We're going to take it up a notch and um, we're not going to go back too much into the basics, but we're going to move forward and really explore some resources and ways in which you can use this tool in your classroom. So we're going to focus on digital whiteboards, using Google Jamboard as digital whiteboards, um, how we can use Google Jamboard in group activities as well as in individual activities. So thanks again for having us. My name is Melanie, Barb is moderating, and here we go digital whiteboard. So Google Jamboard is a digital whiteboard at its true basic level. Um, I'm gonna hop out and I'm just going to take a quick tour of the basic Google Jamboard. So there's a couple different ways you can get to a Google Jamboard. In the May 4th Lunch and Learn, um, they showed you several different ways in which you could access Google Jamboard. Um, I typically like to open up a new tab and click on the top right corner where my Google apps live and open up the Jamboard app. Another way is you can go into your Google Drive and open up a new Jamboard as well. So when I open up my Jamboard app, I click on the plus button in the bottom right corner and now I get my digital whiteboard. It looks pretty plain and simple. It's very similar to that whiteboard in our brick and mortar classrooms. Um, if we can think back a little bit into the past where we stood up in our classroom with our markers and we um, either shared or modeled directions, we might've had a calendar up there um, or we just would write as we would um, maybe share information with students. Students could also grab that pen and come up to the board and they could write. So this is very similar to that, but this is our digital option. Notice along the top, we have a place to title our jam. They're called jams. So we're um, jamming today. And then we have our frames. Um, these frames are similar to slides, if you're familiar with Google Slides. Um, we can expand our frame bar by clicking on the arrow that points down. 
We can also move right to left depending on how many frames we have. Something unique about Google Jamboard is you can create 20 frames and you can also, we're gonna to get to the collaboration piece soon, but you can also have 50 collaborators. Now in a blink of an eye, Google seems to change the parameters on us. So um, I always say as of today, we have um, 20 frames and 50 collaborators. So that could change, um, but that is um, the most recent. Along the left side, you notice our tools. We have some tools here. We have a pen tool um, with six different color options. We have four different um, widths. We have an eraser. So just like um, our face-to-face -face whiteboard, same thing, we have a pen and an eraser. We have a pointer. We have sticky notes. Um, I always think back to um, sticky notes with our whiteboards when we're face-to-face -face, and certainly you can put stickies all over your whiteboard and you can do that here as well. You can also insert images. So not only can you insert an image from your computer, but you can insert images um, from other options as well. And we're gonna get to that a little bit later in this presentation. You have the option for, this is a fairly new tool actually built in, and this is um, for shapes. And then lastly is your text box. If you are presenting, there is a laser tool. So that one's um, nice if you want to click on it and um, draw attention or bring attention to something that you want your students um, to really focus on. So these are the tools. Um, this is our, um, our options across the top. Um, we also have set background. So there are some built-in backgrounds. Later in this presentation, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about this new newer option, and that it is to add an image as your background. Um, one of my favorite new um, options that Jamboard has added in. So I'm gonna spend some time on that one. So hang tight. And then you can also clear your frame. So if a frame gets messy or um, you're ready just to erase it, instead of getting your eraser out, you can just clear the whole frame um, in one swoop. So that's the basics of a digital whiteboard. Let me go back here to our presentation. So in this slide, here are some options of things you might think through in using your digital whiteboard. There's a link here and this, um, if you click on this link, it's just an um, example of what you might put together for a daily schedule. Um, it has a calendar on it. Um, and then different ways that you can use dig a digital whiteboard calendars, lecture notes, modeling tasks and directions. Group activities. So Google Jamboard it ha has a great option to collaborate. So if your students are working um, in two or more groups of people, so you could collaborate in a whole classroom, you could collaborate in small groups, but as we know, most of our Google tools allows for collaboration and this is one of them that I've seen used in a lot of situations in classrooms for collaboration. And I'm gonna share some of those with you in a minute. Here are some reminders um, that students can collaborate not only in synchronous environments, but also in asynchronous environments. So they can, um, in a face-to-face -face environment, in a live environment, at the same time they can collaborate, but um, they can also collaborate in different space and different times. So that is nice. Uh, a nice option with our Google Jamboard. Um, another reminder is to remember to ch change your share settings. So if you want more than one person um, to work together and collaborate in a Jamboard, you will need to think through your share settings and how you're gonna share that out with your students. And then lastly, if you use an LMS, a learning management system, you may want to distribute your Jamboard in an assignment um, with uh, different groups of people. So here are some group activities that um, we're gonna explore uh, and I'm gonna show you together. So I'm gonna hop out of here again. Um, this stop and sketch, I put this one in specifically because I like this idea of having this Jamboard 
And in this Jamboard, um, if you are presenting a concept or a topic that you're teaching with your students and you want to pause and just get a quick overview, get some feedback from your students, this is a great place where the students can all collaborate on the same board and they can stop and sketch their thinking. So one way you could use this is um, Certainly, you would have to make a copy because this was shared with you in view only. So you would make a copy of this and you can share it out with your students. And some, some of your classes might be numbered. So let's say Barb is student number four. Every time in the four box, she would, uh, we would zoom out on this. See, it says, don't forget to zoom. So you'd zoom out and that student number four would draw with their drawing tools um, whatever it is that you would ask them to focus on for feedback. So this is a nice template that you can use um, when you're trying to get a quick glimpse of um, the learning that's happening in your classroom. Another one, start, stop, and continue. This one came from um, Canva. If you haven't used the tool Canva, it might be one that worth exploring. I'm going to come back to that Canva later, but Canva has a lot of whiteboard templates for you. So this was one of their templates in Canva that um, I saved as an image, as a background, and I brought it into Jamboard. So this is what it originally looked like. So this is a background. So if I click on it anywhere, I cannot move it. It is like pasted in the background which is great for students as well, because they're not gonna move that background around. They can just add to it. In the next frame, I've adapted it a little bit. So I went into the original um, template and I took out some of um, these little icons. And then um, if I'm the teacher and I'm sharing it out with my students, I can add different icons in. I could change the directions the way I want. Um, but again, what I like is that background is um, completely um, built in now into that Jamboard. Um, this example, I really liked um, the idea of a gallery walk. So this example, again, you would make a copy of any of these that, that you want to use yourself. Um, but this example would be a quick way to um, add an image of a topic that your students are learning about. Um, then they, with sticky notes or text, they can just do a quick, what do I see and what questions do I still have? Another, it's another way to grab um, feedback as you're teaching along in your topic and in your lessons. Um, in that um, example as well, you'll see underneath it is um, an example of like a finished um, or a completed gallery walk example. So this is what it could look like in your classroom if you did decide to use it. And so for this example, you see the um, directions are located here on the left, and then the students grab these sticky notes and then they write um, what it is that they see in this image and what questions they still have. So that's another way to share. Um, this example here, Oregon model, um, this is actually a link from Twitter. Um, I wanted to also remind you that Twitter is a great resource to find um, and connect with people using Jamboard. So this example comes from um, a Toby. She is a science teacher and um, you can click on that link and you can see um, how her students are all collaborating with these. It's probably small on your screen, but when you click on it, you should be able to see it um, and how uh, they are demonstrating their learning um, all at the same time. Um, and uh, you could actually connect with Toby and maybe get some ideas um, with this connected educator. And the last one here, this is a partner activity. Um, just another example of um, ways in which you could share these Jamboards with your students for collaboration and for them to work together.
All right, so those are our group activities. Um, again, these are just a glimpse of what's out there. If you go to Google and type in Google Jamboard resources or templates, you will get hundreds and hundreds and thousands of already created materials for you. I've just um, um, just pointed out a few of the ones that, um, that you might wanna check out. So as we move from collaboration, group activities, I want you also to think about individual activities. Um, Jamboard not only is great for collaboration, but it's also a great tool to use for individual activities. Just a few reminders, the same thing, students can work um, on their individual work face-to-face -face in a live environment um, at the same time, uh, maybe with you, they might need support or they could work in an asynchronous environment. So this could be something that is an assignment that they do on their own time and their independent um, work where they wanna work independently on it. Um, again, you can create and share this assignment in an LMS. And this is also um, a good opportunity for you to leave feedback for your students in a Jamboard, either on um, sticky notes, or if you created it in an LMS, you could leave your feedback in that way. So here are a few examples that we will explore together. And again, these are focused on individual activities. Um, this first one here, this math man manipulative, um, if you click on this link, it takes you to a website that um, has created lots of free materials for us. They, um, they um, allow us to use them. And if you click on the link, you'll notice um, these are math activities, um, many, many, many math activities. But when you click on them, so let's say um, I'm teaching addition with 20 using 10 frames. I click on the Jamboard and it asks me to make a copy if I want to look at it. And it will then um, make a copy so that you have your own copy of this. And then you can look at this Jamboard and you can decide what um, parts and pieces that you want to use. And then you can also share it back out with your students. Um, notice that there are five frames here. So don't forget to always look up at your frames to make sure that you looked at everything that you want to look at. And if you wanna quick expand your frame bar, you can click on that little arrow pointing down and it will show you all your frames at once. So this, um, this resource might be one that you wanna spend some time looking at. Uh, we have magnetic letters. Um, this one here, I thought this was sort of fun because everyone is taking selfies and we know what selfies are. So this is um, something you could probably do anytime during the year, but it might be a, um, a good way to connect in the beginning of the year with your students and for your students to connect with each other. This is a background. Um, so this example itself is one that um, we cannot change because it's already in Jamboard, but the students could add their um, picture here, or maybe they draw a picture of themselves. And then they can fill in these um, areas as well. Um, if you wanted to create your own background similar to this, you could do that. And I'm gonna show you in just a little bit how to do that in Google Slides. And then there's two more sort the sounds and place value that um, as well, you can click on those um, later in the PDF. All right. so. Jamboard background. So for me, this was a great addition to Google Jamboard because what we um, what we found that in our Google Jamboard, um, when we were working with students, we couldn't put the background, we couldn't sort of glue that background in and students were moving the background and they're trying to collaborate and it just got really messy. So now we have this feature where we can create our own background. So there are a few slides here that you can see. Um, with a GIF that moves very fast. And I know my partner Barb would say she gets dizzy from watching this. 
Um, but you could certainly click on this link for more information um, to learn more about how to create your background. One tip I don't want you to forget about is you will want to make sure that your page setup is to a custom 1920 by um, 1080 pixels. And that will be the perfect size for you to create a Google slide and then save it and bring it in as your background. This next um, slide is a video from a Ditch That Textbook and um, it gives you some more examples of ways in which you could create your background. And then this next slide here. This is, um, I'm reusing this from the May 4th presentation. Uh, this was um, a template that uh, I'm going to hop out here. This was a template of 100 plus Jamboard templates, um, which is nice because someone has already created this for us. So I'm going to I'm going to come in here for you to look at this. Let me open this up. There we go. So not only, um, so make sure you make a copy of this. Not only does it have over 100 um, ideas, but you might find some inspiration in these um, slides. So if you find a slide that you want to use as your background, let's say I come down to slide 18 and I see this one. What is one thing you learned yesterday? And I'm like, oh, I like that slide, but um, maybe I want to change the font or maybe I want a different image. I can do that in the slide before I bring it into Jamboard. So I'm going to show you real quick how easy this is to bring it into Jamboard. Here's my slide. I'm on slide 18. I'm going to download this slide. I'm going to download it. You can either download it as a JPEG or a PNG. I usually start with a JPEG. And um, it asks you where you want to download it. So I'll just save it here. And now this image is dropped to the um, bottom of my um, Chrome window. I'm going to now open up my um, Jamboard that I already have open. I'm going to click on Set Background. I'm going to click image. I'm going to click image. And now I can either browse, I can search for an image, but I know that mine is down in this bar and I'm going to, um, sorry, I'm going to drag it. Nope, I'm going to find my image and I'm going to open it that way. Most of the time you can drag and drop it, but mine's being a little funny, so. So here is my background and now I have my Jamboard with my background, my one slide that I dragged in um, and it's that easy. So I'm gonna go back to my slides. If I wanna make any changes, I simply make the change, go to file again, download JPEG, save it, drag and drop it into um, Google Jamboard, and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna go back here. So did you know, this is the um, did you know section of today's presentation. Did you know that Google Slides, Jamboard and Drawing are the same and they're different. I love this slide. This slide was, um, this image was created by Jennifer Hall and she has a website, Tech Tips 411, great information. Um, and I love how she put this Venn diagram together, um, comparing and contrasting Google Slides, Google Drawings and Jamboard. Um, so today we're talking about Jamboard, but what I love about Jamboard one of the main things that I love and the difference that stands out mostly to me is the pen tool option. So especially for our littles who 
um, you know, maybe are just learning to read, they don't know how to type very well, they can grab their pen, their finger. So they can draw if they have um, a touch screen, they could draw with their finger, they could use a stylus, they could also use their mouse as the pen. So I do love that feature about, um, that's probably one of my favorite ones about Google Jamboard. Uh, did you know you can use these specific colors when creating your backgrounds in Google Slides? So I love to have my colors match and the, um, these are the different codes, the color codes, the hex codes that are um, for the stickies and the pens. So if you're creating in Google Slides and you wanted them to match, you could use a Google Chrome extension like the eyedrop picker and then make sure all your colors are matching. Did you know you can, you, you can see version history? This is a fairly new one. This was a game changer. When they added this in, um, that was what many teachers were saying. They were saying, um, that's great if my students are collaborating, but if I have 20 students collaborating and um, uh, one gets a little crazy and makes some changes in one of the frames that I don't like, I don't know who that student is and I don't know how to go back to the version um, where we started this morning. So they've added this in, this version history um, is very easy to use and it's very similar to version history in um, some of our other uh, some of our other tools. So this is a quick example um, of how version history works. In the top right corner, under more actions, click those three dots and click on see version history. And now you'll notice that we have it by date, and we also have it color coordinated by user. So if I wanna look at April 22nd, and I wanna see all the different times Sadie or Melanie has made changes, I simply click on each one, and it takes me exactly to um, the person, the time, the date. I can restore if I want to this version. Um, I also can name the version. So if instead of having the date there, I could um, type in anything different that I wanted. So lots of great options for version history as well. Okay. So did you know students can screencast their learning using Screencastify? while using the Jamboard app to demonstrate their thought process or their learning. So this is just an added feature. Google um, has a Chrome extension called Screencastify. If you have not added that to your Chrome browser, please do. It is, um, again, one of my favorite extensions and um, it's a great opportunity for students to screencast their learning while they're showing or demonstrating something in Google Jamboard. So that's just a little um, added tip for you. And I think we're almost at the end here. Uh, we have our resources page. I feel like there might have been one. Oh, yep. I knew there was one more slide. Let me come back to this one. Um, did you know you can find and or create Jamboard resources in so many places? So these are just three of my top favorites. Um, Wakelet is um, a place where there's lots of curated um, uh, Jamboard templates and resources for you. Canva is a place to create, but not only to create images, um, you can also search for images. If you go to Canva and um, just type in whiteboards, um, you will get lots of options that are already created for you. And then lastly, Twitter. Um, if you haven't been connecting lately in Twitter or you're new to Twitter or you are a seasoned Twitter user, um, please don't forget about Twitter. There are um, great ways to find resources and connect with educators just like yourself. So I do think that will take us almost to the end here. We have a few more slides. Uh, one is our resource slide. Lots of links. For more information, if you want to go back to um, and dig a little deeper into any of the um, places that I've mentioned today, they're all listed here. Um, 
This has been a great opportunity to be here with you guys today. Thank you so much, um, Friday Institute, for having both me and Barb and um, here to share all this great information about using Jamboards in our classrooms. Yes, thank you, ladies, so very much. And if you do have a question, feel free to drop it into the chat. I'm seeing lots of praise and, and oohs and ahs over resources. If you missed it, the PDF of the slides is linked into the chat as well as a feedback survey. Um, Melanie, this is Brian. I just wanted to add or ask, um, do you know how often Google notifies of updates in Jamboards? Because I know I just go in sometimes and discover something new. Um, are you, do you have any tips for kind of being on the cutting edge of that? There is a website that Google has. Um, I don't know, Barb, if you have that handy, but there is a, a website that Google often um, puts all of their updates on. Uh, I don't have that handy. Um, and they typically organize it um, monthly. Um, but that's that's usually where I get my information. Yeah, Tom might know. I'm, I'm looking, Brian, to see if I, I have that link somewhere. And I, I know I have it somewhere. I just can't put my fingers on it at the very moment. I wonder if we Google Google updates if we'll be able to find that easily. <laughs> Fortunately, not that easy to find. Um, yeah. Um, I since I'm a Google trainer, I do get um, emails frequently of updates, so I just typically share out any updates that I get with um, my PLN. So make sure you follow me on Twitter, and maybe that will help. <laughs> Oh, yep. Tom, Thank you, Tom, Tom's for sharing it. To the chat. Oh, thanks, Tom. Updates.googleblog.com. Thank you, Tom. Are there I'll any always, other questions? I'll count on Tom. All right, well, on behalf of the Friday Institute, I want to thank you, Melanie. I want to thank you, Barb. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.